Well, it's finally happened. I have decided today, of all days, to come and shoot the mundane. I find myself in probably the most unsuitable mundane place to, uh, to shoot mundaneity. Yes, I have come to a holiday seaside town. Why is shooting of the mundane an important thing to do as a photographer? Uh, it, it's quite simple, isn't it? Mundaneity is all around us. Loads of things are mundane, yet all too often we try to shoot something that's kind of gorgeous. It's different. It's a vista. It's something that's it's something that you might argue is yeah just photographically interesting. And I'm going to argue that lots of things are photographically interesting. They don't have to be wonderful sunsets or striking vistas or hot spots. All of these things. There's so much of interest in everyday life. And just because this is a holiday seaside town, it doesn't mean to say that the mundane isn't here. I mean, how much more mundane do you want than a litter bin? Your photos can be as simple as this, or juxtapositioned against things that are less mundane. <laughs> the point is that you start looking for things that are of interest, they spark some kind of idea, and um, you can just kind of run away with it. And it's something that I don't do nearly often enough because I'm often at those locations that are kind of honeypot, and it's not always a great move. The definition of mundane is lacking of interest or excitement. I'd argue that that is in itself very subjective. These three sheds caught my eye. I mean, you can see why, I'm sure. Their position in this clearing in the dunes is visually interesting, as is the fact that they are pretty rotten and decrepit, yet someone's taken the time to paint them these kind of candy pink and blue colours. In essence, they're mundane. They're just a collection of three sheds spaced out in this wide area, yet the photo opportunities that they provide are immeasurable. So it's important to realise that my interpretation of mundane here is a bit ordinary, not the kind of sunset scenes or woodland scenes that you might expect from a landscape photographer. Perhaps it would be better to call it observational photography. I particularly like this little boating lake, but of course the abstract nature of it, uh, the, the kind of mundane nature of it. Uh, there's some, I don't know whether it's sand or brick dust or just, sand doesn't float generally, does it? I mean, this looks like brick dust. It's creating some really nice textures on the, uh, the surface. It's a shame that there's little bits of flotsam and rubbish on it, but it doesn't stop the intent of the shot, just the sweeping curve of the edge. It's quite interesting. There's a shot from up here looking down on this waterway. I was going to just concentrate again on the S curve, but actually looking through this, this lens is rather nice because uh, I've got foreground of some uh, plant embedding and such here with her, not herbs, um, shrubs. If I get up on tippy toe, I can get a nice shot. Now, I've got a couple of people down here and I want to get them in the right place. So as they wander around. Never work with the general public or animals. They just didn't go into the spaces I needed them to. I suppose you could argue that a boating lake isn't that mundane. So uh, let's try and find something else. How about this? I was struck by the shapes and the colours. It's just such a muted, simple image. And you can't get that much more mundane. Simple shot here of probably 1950s or so block of flats. Uh, I've got a layered effect, so I've got some of the foreground foliage in front of me with a hedge, uh, mostly the hedge to be honest with you. I'm just going up a little bit 
tilting up slightly so we get the uh, the building and it's uh, got the polarizer on it's taking down some of the reflections in the glass of the red mini on the other side wait for a car somewhere around 120th 150th 160th of a second something like that still creating blur in the uh, the motion of the cars going past now one thing you may have noticed about this video that's different from normal is the sheer number of images when you're out shooting this kind of stuff there are many many opportunities and sometimes you just shouldn't ignore them yeah you may well get some boring images but you'll probably get more hits than misses and the more you practice the better you'll get come more down into the well it's not the town center it's the the kind of yeah the golden mile the yeah the i don't know the tourist part and uh, brand new leisure center here with swimming pool and such and there's quite an interesting array of shots here so yeah, just this kind of slab of color is quite interesting i might do something with that and this path this wobbly wavy path i got a shot uh, of that looking this way i don't know what that's like it's probably not so good but that, basically that's kind of looking straight out to to see there uh, and uh, car park I mean probably one of the most expensive car parks outside of a uh, um, uh, an airport at uh, what is it 11 pounds 40 for uh, up to three hours clearly they don't want you here but if you're using the center it's free for three hours so that's that's something uh, there's plenty of other car parking around but that, that that's astronomical uh, but actually new car park as well so i'm sure that there's something in here because of the colored bays and the the the, the markings on the road and such so i'm sure i'm sure there's something mundane there also i think there's we just about get it central so we've got this i can't see so easily on this tiny screen but you must be able to see just this little kind of ramp down to the sands and then down the bottom there there's a um a life ring uh, yeah mm, it's not quite central which is annoying isn't it so for this shot i chose to put the long lens on because i wanted to get the compression effect because the uh, life boy is so far away uh, by comparison to the uh, the ramp and by pulling this into what is it it's about 67 mil on here i'm I haven't quite got the position right. I've taken a shot or two of this already, but uh, I was rushing. There was a boat going past, although I don't think it added anything to the shot. Now there's some people coming into the shot, and I don't know whether they're going to make this more awkward or, or more simple. I'm not sure. And maybe if I just raise this a touch, I think raising it is quite nice as well. It can be so difficult lining up centres as well. Uh, you're trying to get something like this symmetrical. It's very, very awkward. And often you don't notice your mistakes until you get it onto a big screen. Well, as you can see, I chose the one with the ship in it. Those without the ship in the background, just that little bit too empty. The shots with the people in it were dominated by the people. It's not ideal that the ship is looking out of the frame, but I'm certainly not bothered enough to not show it. So I'm set up for the shot of the slab of colour here. Now, this is a, a, as simple as you like, but it's so awkward to, to set up. You've got to be so careful. Uh, some of the simple shots in uh, complicated situations are actually really awkward to set up because if you start looking back over here we've got the facade of the uh, the tower building over there and if you're not careful the white of the the, the lower bit just beyond, beyond the windows there creeps in on the top of that and becomes a visual distraction because it's white it ends up uh, taking the eye too much so uh, you've got to position that nicely I decided that I wanted to get this wavy path in and a uh, little bit of 
kind of mid ground interest with the car and uh, yeah it, it's just really careful position also make sure we don't get that awful McDonald's sign in uh, as well because again just visual confusion uh, so simplified the shot an awful lot by being really careful and meticulous of where you place the camera so you do not get these distracting elements in it When you're shooting the mundane, one of the things that will help you get a good shot is to look for graphic elements. And uh, there's some good graphic elements at the seaside, but there's good graphic elements in every location. Let's face it, I just happen to be here. I don't want any of you whinging. So, oh, but you're at the seaside, you're bound to get good shots. Just, yeah, you could be anywhere. You really could. Good graphic element here. We've got, uh, ignoring the tripod, because I just should have got it out of the way for the shot shouldn't I there we go uh, yeah good graphic element here just uh, this set of steps down to the beach it's rather nice and if you can uh, completely isolate it and yeah this is what I was on about with the last shot uh, of the marina center which uh, is just there uh, yeah so I haven't walked far again yeah it's about simplifying things it's about taking away distractions so I framed this shot so that you don't have this uh, lamppost thingy in the background really cut that off uh, got low pointed down to it so you've only got a little bit of the horizon uh, and the sea back there and uh, yeah, there's a couple of human figures in it which I might clone out just to simplify it further but they're not really adding anything to the shot and it's just looking down at the yeah the, the, the scene of yeah, a bit of metal going into the sand it's nice and graphic works quite well certainly in the back of the camera it took my eye and uh, a lot of you seem to think I've got a good eye so uh, let's hope it has worked because I'm going to look a twat otherwise you'll see that I did remove the people from the beach line the water line here and I've done other processing to this and other shots throughout this video Post processing is important to all shots, but I find it's particularly important to these kind of images as you can kind of add mood and texture and all kinds of things that can take a bland image and turn it into quite an interesting one. Here I'm trying to make the anything but mundane look quite mundane. I'll show you what I mean. Now I think you'll agree that most towns don't have a large ferris wheel. The way in which I'm shooting it, which is effectively, uh, oh, you see it in the camera, kind of almost directly up, makes it into a, a kind of graphic shape, uh, a reduction of colour because, well, there's nothing in the sky. It's incredibly flat light, and uh, yeah, it's it's a mundane shot of something not very mundane. Uh, I don't know whether that's an example of shooting the mundane or um, making various attempts at doing something different. I don't know. It's a shot. Um, yeah. Maybe just another way of looking at things. Up against the bland sky, there was only one way to go with processing these images. Black and white and graphic. And you'll see graphic featuring a lot in my mundane photos. And an observation that was made on um, a Facebook group, I think it was Brilliant Britain or, or something, the other day, someone was inside one of these gondolas and took a photograph looking out. And you'll see on them, there's uh, a bunch of kind of icons and instructions as to what you should and shouldn't do in them. And I kid you not, it says, no punching and kicking the window. What kind of moron does that? I mean, what, what kind of society are we now in? Well, we have to put signs on windows within something that's kind of, yeah, 80 foot up off the ground. No kicking and punching the windows. Ain't this the, kind of, the kind of idiot that's going to kick and punch a window can't read it. If you want mundane, I just how much more mundane can we get? Yeah, it's a defibrillator on the wall outside of the Sea Life Centre of Yarmouth, which bizarrely at about two o'clock is closing up. Or seems to be at least, they're taking stuff in from the outside. Anyway, who cares? Uh, 
I'm zoomed right out on this. I am pretty square to the defibrillator itself. Nice wide um, uh, zoom to it because I'm catching the red of this door that's got Mr. Whippy on it the blue of this window here and the reflection on it. I'm not trying to cut that reflection down because the reflection's adding a bit of interest to it. Um, you could argue it's complicating the scene. I don't think it is. Um, and at the end of the day, it's my shot and not yours. So uh, if you don't like it, you could tell me perhaps I should have put a, uh, a polarizer on it. I'm, perhaps I'm being lazy, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's a simple shot. Uh, it's mundane, but the color, it's the colour, the block colour that's there. It's what attracted me to it. And uh, I think it's a decent little shot. Got to be a little careful here because they're playing uh, yeah, pop music. And uh, if I uh, put too much of it on, I'm going to get demonetized on the video. Uh, when I say they, I mean, you can see that uh, well, it's uh, an arcade, but it's actually part of the Pier Complex at Great Yarmouth. And what I have here is uh, the, uh, the fire escapes from the, the theatre. Uh, and again, I don't want anyone moaning, well, you're at Seaside, you're gonna go great stuff. You could get shapes and colors like this out, I'm expecting anywhere, so, you know, uh, this, uh, things like this door. Uh, but what really grabbed it, these, these fire escapes are just so graphic. I mean, that can be done uh, with these, and I'd rather like these. Like I said earlier, editing plays a big part of these images. Some of them have had quite a lot of adjustment to them to add a kind of gritty urban feel to them, pulling the textures up, really highlighting them. And you can see that most in this one. I've adjusted this mostly in Analog FX Pro. I just used one of the presets. It just seemed to work. Of course, not all images need the same editing. Many of the shots in this video have been treated in a very different way with more kind of orange and teal shades, a little bit of desaturation. Ultimately, you give each image the editing that it deserves, the editing that makes it feel right. For most people, shooting mundane stuff is a bit out of the ordinary. We don't often aspire to just shoot everyday mundane stuff. If this video has given you some ideas on what to do, please give it a like. And if you'd like to have some ideas on other different things, watch this video here. See you soon.